Hello everyone, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. I know it's been a while since I've put any videos and the reason for that was I was pursuing my masters and I'll tell you more about it in the coming videos. But now that I've finished my masters, I plan to put out videos regularly. So stay tuned for that and let's get started. <music> So today in this video we will be talking about the kinetics of the ribcage and this will be the final part in the kinetics section of the ribcage that is the pump handle and the bucket handle movement that we have already seen. We will be covering in this video the accessory muscles that are involved in the movement of the ribcage. So first starting over here we can see that there are multiple muscles and this slide will predominantly cover the upper part of the ribcage and the next slide will cover the lower part. So starting with the sternocleidomastoid, the muscle starts from the sternum and the clavicle and goes all the way up and attaches to the mastoid process of your temporal bone. And if you look at its attachment, if it's on, it's, it's on the front of the cervical spine, we have also looked at biomechanics of the cervical spine in the past and we know that this contraction of that muscle will create flexion at the cervical spine, right? So that's what I mentioned here. It flexes the cervical spine, but it can work as an accessory muscle with the help of trapezius. So trapezius is right behind the cervical spine. So when the trapezius will stabilize the cervical spine, meaning it will make it stationary, the sternocleidomastoid when it contracts in, instead of creating flexion at cervical spine it will pull the whole ribcage superiorly or upward and that will create a pump handle motion that we have seen in the past right so that's what i mentioned here trapezius stabilizes the head and the cervical spine and the scm will create a pull to the ribcage superiorly that is the pump handle motion of the upper ribcage and this is usually seen at the end of inspiration so you can actually try this on yourself you can just breathe in and towards the end of your breath you can take another sharp breath and just check the muscles that are present over here on the side and, and you feel them tensing up those are your SCM muscles firing up and pulling the whole ribcage up so that's the function of your sternocleidomastoid now let's go to pectoralis major which is present over here as you can see and its function as an accessory muscle can change based on the position of the humerus but generally for it to work as an accessory muscle the distal attachment of the pectoralis should be stable right so that is your humerus needs to be stable or the shoulder girdle so if you can see over here it can elevate the upper rib cage when the shoulder and humerus is stabilized so provided this attachment is stable it can pull the ribcage upward and depending on the position of the humerus so if humerus goes up it will pro pull it upward creating that pump handle motion and help in inspiration whereas if it's down it will kind of create downward movement so it will help in exhalation so based on the position of the humerus pectoralis major function can change as an accessory muscle next going on to pectoralis minor which is attached to third fourth and fifth rib and because of its attachment, it will elevate those ribs, again helping with that pump handle movement or the inspiration in the upper rib cage. Finally, going to last few muscles, that is the subclavius, which is present just below the clavicle. And again, because of its positioning, elevation of the rib is the function that it will, it will create and help in inspiration. Whereas levator costarum, which is present posteriorly, so you can't see it in this picture, they attach from C7 to T12 of the transverse process and go to, towards the ribs in that region, slight one level lower, so next lower rib. And these muscles which are present posteriorly will help in again elevation of those upper ribs, right? So all these muscles in the upper rib cage region, they will help in inspiration except the pectoralis major which can help in inspiration as well as expiration depending on the position of the humerus. Now that we have understood this very well, let's go on to the lower part of the abdomen or the rib cage to see what muscles help in 
inspiration as well as expiration so speaking about the accessory muscles we have the abdominal muscles in the lower region which play a big role and these include your transverse abdominus rectus abdominus external and internal oblique that you can see are present over here now the major function of your abdominal muscles as an accessory muscle is to create exhalation and how does it create that it is attached to the lower part lower ribs right and it goes and attaches to the pelvis so when this contracts these ribs are pulled downwards and when they are pulled downwards and the abdomen contracts this increases the intra abdominal pressure and as the intra abdominal pressure is increased it pushes the diaphragm up and this pushing of the diaphragm up will push all the air in your lungs out now if this concept is not too clear you can go back and check out my video on the function of diaphragm how it works as a primary muscle and these are the accessory muscles which help the diaphragm in exhalation right so going back and checking out those videos will definitely clarify all these uh, concepts much better so this so this movement actually you can feel by doing a forceful exhalation you can feel the abdominal muscles contract if you do you can feel the stomach muscles contract and that's how that abdomen creates that exhalation process which is a forceful exhalation so if we go here what i mentioned here creates forceful exhalation by pulling the ribs and the costal cartilages down so this area pulling it down which increases the intra abdominal pressure over here and pushes the diaphragm up now when the diaphragm is pushed up the volume of the air as well as the speed of the air at which it goes out will be increased so there is increase in volume and speed of exhalation along with this there is also two more ways in which the abdominal muscles help in inhalation so this was exhalation but the abdominal muscle can also help in inhalation process as an accessory muscle so how that happens is at the end of exhalation so when all the air is out and the ribs are down this creates a stretch on the costal fibers of the diaphragm and when this stretch is created the diaphragm is in optimum length tension relationship that means the muscles of the diaphragm are at a length with which they can contract very well and create that inhalation and that's how it helps in the inhalation process so i've mentioned here end of exhalation causes passive stretch at the costal fibers of the diaphragm that optimizes the length tension relationship and prepares for the next inspiration so that's how your abdominal muscles help in inspiration process as well there is another way it can help but it's a pretty big topic and i have already covered it in the previous video you can check it out or i'll briefly mention it towards the end of this video now going back to some other muscles there is serratus posterior superior and inferior which are present posteriorly and because of their attachment in that region it is assumed that they help in respiration so they are the respiratory muscles and then going ahead we have the transverse thoraces which come from the lower part of the sternum and go and attach to the costal cartilages these work along with abdomen to create that same exhalation movement right that we spoke about bringing the ribs down and then finally we have the gravity which also works with your abdomen so what it does is basically if you are in supine position the gravity acts downwards puts pressure on the abdominal contents and increases that intra abdominal pressure and this increase in intra abdominal pressure can stabilize your central tendon of the diaphragm and help the diaphragm move effectively again how this central tendon is exactly stabilized and it allows the diaphragm to create inspiration and expiration is covered in the previous video where i speak about how abdomen plays a role in breathing process right but what we take away from here is gravity along with abdomen helps in the inspiration expiration process as well as the abdominal muscles on the side so now that we have covered the topic let's quickly summarize this so first we started with the sternocleidomastoid how that muscle along with the help of trapezius by stabilizing the head it pulls the ribcage up during the end of inspiration so it helps in inspiration 
whereas pec major can help in inspiration and expiration based on the position of the humerus and its attachment to the rib cage and then finally we go to subclavius and levator costarum which helps in elevation of the ribs because of their attachment along with pec minor and then we went to the abdominal muscles where we saw how they create exhalation forceful exhalation along with helping in inspiration by stabilizing the central tendon of the diaphragm along with gravity in supine position and also it creates that optimum length tension relationship for the diaphragm which prepares the diaphragm for the next process of inspiration and finally we have the other serratus posterior muscles which are assumed to help in respiration as well as transverse thoracis which work with abdominal muscles during that exhalation process so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching